so I would like to welcome you to our webinar today, More Than a Portfolio, Use FreshGrade to its Full Potential and Generate Report Cards. Um, my name is Siobhan Nordstrom, and I am the Community Manager here at FreshGrade, and I am honored to introduce you to Jared Webb, who is a Grade 2 teacher in Alberta, and he's going to be presenting um, for you today all about how he uses FreshGrade in his classroom. So I'm going to go ahead and let you take it away, Jared. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so I'm um, just going to try to share with you a little bit today about how uh, we here at in Black Falls are using um, FreshGrade to actually do more than just collect evidence and, and portfolios and stuff and how we were actually can create a report card from it. Um, we didn't start out obviously doing this, so our journey is a little bit took some time to get there. So originally we had fresh grade portfolios and paper portfolios in that traditional uh, report card. Um, and then we moved to uh, just fresh grade portfolios and then still making our traditional report cards in uh, Word document and saving in DocuShare and all those kinds of fun things. And now actually we just have fresh grade as a school wide. Um, and it's taken some time to get there. It's taken learning a bit of the tricks and and ways to get around a few different things. But we actually just have fresh grade, and then at the end of the year here, um, I'm just going to hit generate, and I will have all my report cards printed and can print them out for me. So I'm just gonna take you through kind of how we got there, um, some of the things, ways we line up our traditional report cards, so that way our fresh grade report cards had those similarities for parents, and um, how easy it really is to do this. A um, Couple of things that I just wanna put out there and so everybody knows. We're not trying to calculate an average. Um, I know that there is um, a few issues with that currently. Um, we're outcomes based, so what we really want is just that uh, mark at the end of the unit year. And um, you know, we're we're using at IREC, we're using the current fresh rate, and we really look forward to all of the upgrades and, and enhancements that um, I've heard are coming, and I cannot wait to see. So, just a couple of things. If you're trying to calculate average, I know that can be some issues. So I'll just show you what you can do and then maybe that'll give you some ideas and some workarounds and stuff like that. Um, so we just start really simple. So when I started on this a couple of years ago, I started by just looking at our traditional report cards and trying to figure out if I could actually make something that worked on FreshGrade. So lots of back and forth with my admin um, talking about and you know talking to other people and what we could do. So this is just kind of an overview of what our original looked like. A couple of things here we have our um, our indicators here, so excellent grade level, competent grade level, approaching grade level, not meeting grade, grade level or not assessed. And then your usual language arts, kind of like the units or the, the sections under language arts. And then our actual uh, parent friendly, student friendly, um, specific outcomes that we're actually putting marks on for the end of the year. So just kind of idea of where we started. Um, so when we come to set up our, our fresh grade, we're just going to go really quickly through this. Just some of the big things that if you don't have in your fresh grade, it's going to be impossible to, as I played with this, impossible to generate that report card. So some of the important things that we do. So right here, clicking on the fresh grade, we're going to set up that account and make sure that it is uh, going. So go ahead and then we're going to click on subjects and grades. This is important later on. We come in here. We select all of our subjects that we are teaching. So again, this is just following that, that original report card. You know, every place we had a subject, that was the subject then that we're choosing now um, in, our, in our teacher account. Um, we make a, a, an assessment tool. So again, here, those indicators that we had at the top of ours are here and name it. And then also this, we've made it as a max four and these down the side. And to be honest, I don't exactly know, since we're not calculating and it doesn't give us an average, but we had to have the numbers there in order for it to show up. So that was a few trial and errors on my part. Uh, save it, it's now in there for you. And then set up the categories. And what we decided to do was treat the categories like the units or the different sections that would fall under each subject. So reading is under language arts, so we just plug all of these in, it doesn't matter what order, um, it, and it just makes it available for you later on, and you'll see a little bit later on where it is. So all of these word work, you know, in, in science, it might be boats and buoyancy, um, 
what else do we do? Uh, bugs is another unit that we have in grade two. So just kind of the units is what we're using for the categories in the setup for your um, account. Um, and then this is another really important one is that we have the mastery scale um, selected in order to get the results we want at the end of this. And I mean, I could go way more into how to set up like all of these kinds of things, but FreshRate already has all sorts of tutorials out on that and I don't want to get stuck up on that. So we're just going to keep on going, uh, moving forward and you choose your own tools based on what you need. This is just what worked for our building. Uh, coming into creating the activities, uh, we actually sat down as a, we sit down as an entire staff currently at the beginning of the year and we go through all of this. Um, and we'll just take you through, I'll just take you through one of these and show you how we have decided to set it up and all the things that were really important in order to be able to generate that report card at the end. Um, so in creating our activity, uh, one thing that we did is that we decided to keep our title and the outcome. So the specific mark we're putting on it to have the same. And that's just again for parents and students. So that way it's very, very clear um, what we're actually looking at. Over here, we can use the drop down, and this is why I put in all those categories before. Is so now I have the categories. So it's going to be language arts and it's going to go under reading. And it's read aloud with accuracy. But the, remember, this is just the title. In this one, we're actually going to make the custom objective. And we want to do the custom objective because we want it to be the same words as what our parents are used to. Um, and so that way they understand what we're talking about. So this is language arts. I'm going to type in uh, reading and then I'm going to put in the objective. And this is exactly the same as my title. And that's just for simplicity and for parents. Save that in. We're going to select our reporting scale that we just made in our uh, for our school. And then down here, we're going to add in our um, we actually leave our students like that. And what we did is we take our entire old report card which, and we just copy and paste in all of these <clears throat> titles, all of our objectives. So that way we have what looks like this. So this is just a whole bunch of activities for the year um, that we just need to assign students to. And so the way we, I like to use it is I use this as almost like my checklist of uh, work that still needs to be assessed, that I still need evidence for. So I can just have a quick look at this and, um, here you can see again where these categories come in. So I can, I can sort all of these by subject as well as categories. So I could look for, just find all of my reading um, outcomes and then those ones will just show up. Um, here, I don't have this because I've just had to make, uh, do some screenshots here at the end of the year. But here you can see these are all my data analysis um, in math as, as our unit. And so I could, I could just go in here find that and they would come out really easy to see what I have left to work on for the year. Uh, when it actually comes into using it, it's a couple of important things that you're going to need to do. This date will be the date that you started it on. It needs to be updated. Otherwise, you're not, you're going to have a really tough fi time finding this activity in your portfolio. I like to put in a description. Um, sometimes it's that you know, a little bit of description of the procedure, what we did maybe in a science unit, maybe what we were working on, or it could just be something, a reminder to parents that this is one example of um, their child's work. Um, and selecting the category, data analysis. Now this one here is to help me sort it. If I look down here, I have a data analysis here, which is for the report card. So this right here is the most important thing to actually generate my report card. So I need to have my subject, my unit, as well as the outcome. This up here is more what the parents see and how I can sort it when I have that, you know, that list of activities there. And making sure this is selected. And then this is where I add my students. And this might be some of my students, but it might not be all of them. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, just because we have some students that may not be following exactly that graded, um, outcomes or, or they might have some IPPs and stuff like that. Um, some of the stuff that we've been working on is um, how to add evidence. Um, ways we like to add evidence is with, we all have iPads in our classroom, but I know there's different devices you could use 
creating videos. Um, great things that I do with that is um, make a quick video with the iPad students explaining um, their boat that they made in science, explaining buoyancy, um, the materials they use, why they decided to use those materials. And then it's great to ask questions and stuff with, and that can just go right into that science activity that we made before. Uh, audio recordings, um, I like to pop this, pop the iPad down right in front of me when I'm doing um, some reading tests with kids, and then I just hit the record button. A uh, little less intimidating for the grade twos when there's not a video of them, but you know you can still get that recording. So parents can actually see where they're at, and pictures, take pictures of their art, take pictures of a few different things just on the iPad that I can flip through a class set, pop those in, no problem. Uh, something else is we have Chromebooks in grade two. So I have my students putting in slides and drawings, um, or you can you know, Google drawing, what's really easy is you can just have them do an insert and put it in. And then what's a great one, we just did one today with um, working on a Callowit and so they built some Anukshooks and, and had some Northern Lights backdrop. And so then the kids just put that in and at the bottom, then they typed in a paragraph about what they had worked on. Screencastify is really great if you have them um, wanting to do an ex uh, explain, and you can upload that. I have the kids doing that. Or links even uh, allows parents to see into some of the documents that the students are working on while it's being worked on. Um, and then this is a really great one too, is to scan it in on our photocopier and then just email it to myself. Then I just have all the files. You can either do it as a PDF or a JPEG. And then I just dr uh, drag and drop it right into that kid's activity and I can mark it on the spot. This is also really quick. I really like it for some of the bigger like writing ass assignments and stuff like that. It just makes it quick and easy. And here's a, I put this little note here because this is something that we always have. If it isn't an activity with an outcome, it won't generate a report card generate it into a report card. So if it's just going into your portfolio side, that is not going to show up in your report card. It needs to be an activity and you have to have that outcome with the, with the subject and the unit and the actual outcome in there. Otherwise, it's not going to show up for us for later. And just a couple of things that we've, we have discussions about in our building now is what happens if we need to assess it more than once? So just to give you kind of an example, for example, like a science unit, if we have one mark for that science unit, we'll have one activity. And, you know, over the course of working on it, we might drop quite a few pieces of evidence into it and then give it a mark at the end. Um, if it is something like our reading levels for grade two, this is something that needs to happen more than once throughout the year. So that way parents are aware of where their child is actually at for that time of the year. So I find the easiest way is just to copy it to make sure that all the information is completely the same and then I have a good activity already built. Just hit the copy, put it in, and you have it. The other way to do it, of course, is to create a new activity and select the custom objective that you've already built. Because once we've already put in that objective, we can just find it from the list again. However, my account, because I've played with it for so many years, I kind of have all these random custom objectives. So it can be kind of a mess there. So I tend to just copy it in and I know it's going to work just fine. Um, another great way is we will put in, so we might have two, three pieces of evidence into one activity. And then we'll just date and put in comments based on that time of the year. Um, this works really well. Um, and then you can just leave a mark off of it or you can keep just updating that mark for that time of the year. So. Um, writing it might be or reading with accuracy might be um, in the fall in january and in the spring and we can just keep changing that mark with the comments so the parents know why they're at that mark for this time of the year so there's a couple you can make a new activity or you can just keep adding to the same one just with these these dated comments which clears it up for parents a bit um and this is of course just with the old system so i know that there's new changes coming and that's one that i'm hoping is coming um what if we have, and this is again how we decided to attach this or attack this because um, even with traditional report cards, they don't always look very traditional if we have some unique learners. Um, so on individual program plans or IPPs as we call them in Alberta here. So what we decided to do is to put this modified rate in front of it 
And, um, but what's really important is that we went and we put it in front of our objective as well. So that way it will say modified when we create our report card later on, which you'll see. Um, this is really important that we have both. So this is what the parents will see when they're just scanning through their um, child's portfolio right now. This will make sure that when the report card is printed, the parents are getting the same information. Because if I were to change this and not put modified in this one, then on the actual report card, the parents will just see that and they might think that their child actually is reading completely at grade level instead of maybe having some unique outcomes for them uh, in particular. Um, so this is just a quick overview of what my uh, fresh grade was looking like a couple of days ago. So you can see this one here, for example, I put changed the date up so it moved way up to here, but I didn't assign any kids to it. So that's why it's, how it's looking there. This one here, I'm missing evidence for two kids and so forth. So again, it's kind of that double check again, even while I put in evidence and make marks, I can see who's missing really quickly, see uh, which kid it is, maybe excuse them if needed, um, or I'm just not ready to put in evidence. So this is kind of how it looks like before. And I did, I made a, I generated a report card, which I ended up deleting, but we will be doing this in a month or so. So when it actually comes time to generate a report card, we're going to click over here in portfolios. You're going to get your class list here, which of course is all blanked out for me. Um, and then we're going to click on this options and this options and click create, create report card. Uh, important, really, really important here is our time range or dates. Um, so first of September, until I did right till the end of the year because that's what we'll be doing later, select all of the subjects we want to include. And again, this is why we selected subjects at the very beginning in our account. And since it's the end of the year and we want to get all of those, we'll just select all of them, click generate report. And this is what's going to show up. And what's really nice, we have a picture of the student and their name is up there. Looks quite nice. Now you can see I've selected all of those subjects. I have all of my units or areas. And then I can, this is where I like to double check. Do I have all of the objectives for this student? So when I, when I generated this one a little bit ago, I only had one objective, but I actually need two for it to follow kind of how the old report cards looked. So right there, I'd see, well, I don't have them all. Um, you can do a quick check to make sure they work. And if you click on the show, you can actually see each individual mark with each of your outcomes that have been put in. Um, and because I know that sometimes the averaging doesn't work, we have a few workarounds around that. So for example, if I have a child that was approaching grade level in the fall for reading with accuracy, they're approaching grade level in January for reading with accuracy, but then in, in June, they've made a ton of growth and now they're at grade level, um, their, their outcome might not come out actually how it's supposed to. So really easily, I can just click right here and then select which outcome I want in their report card. And once, once I pick it, this will then stay here. So I want that kid to be reading at grade level because that's where they got to by the end of the year. I don't want them to try to average it and put them anywhere lower. So you can, you can change these outcomes based on your professional judgment right in here, which is great and saves us a lot of time. Uh, a couple of things in this page that are amazing that we love is that we can add comments for every subject if needed. And then you kind of have that traditional teacher comments at the end. Um, typically we tend to use this. What we love about it is because we've made so many comments throughout the year. Um, we refer parents right back into the portfolios to get more specific. So now we've cut down to, you know, all of those comments and all of those things, which is really amazing. Um, and I'm just going to show you what it actually looks like because this was always, well, you know, all these are crammed together, but if we just click on print, this is how it's going to look. Again, their picture, their name is everything up there, but it actually spreads them all out. So now we can see with the symbols what they have um, in, in all of their subjects. And we just have, we have a couple pages of those. Everything is in here nice and neat. Um, to maintain our le legal requirements, we are, have this as a front page. We have this 
um, that will come in here. So then we have this as kind of the legend so parents can actually see what all of these marks look like. And then also a bit of notes about if their child has an adapted or a modified, which we talked briefly about how to put that in. So again, this kind of information could look like whatever you need to for your building. Um, and again, another requirement of Alberta is that we say that they pass the grade. So that just goes in at the end and we are done. A um, couple of things that um, I just want to uh, not, not scare you about, but just kind of put a heads up on is just some best practices um, that we've had lots of discussions about is every mark needs an activity, but does every activity need evidence? So what I mean by that is right now, we can't put more than, um, we can't put more than one piece of evidence into an activity and, and mark them independently. So for example, for can print neatly, I'm not going and putting in a piece of evidence to every kid in that activity for a mark. I just put in an explanation and asking parents to go see all of their work throughout the year. And at the end of the year, I just go and put in an overall mark for say neat printing, um, spelling, those kinds of things. What it's done for us is it's opened up ways that we can assess. Like I was talking about, it can be videos, it can be audio. It doesn't just have to be traditional where we just have to put it into a portfolio and it's everything's attached to the mark. So it's not even right. It's all just in one nice little package. Um, classroom structures. I know this is, this was a big thing is where are you going to find time to add all this evidence? My suggestion would be have the kids do it. Um, my grade twos are adding stuff themselves all the time to their own portfolio. We're in it probably every day or every two days. And it does take time at the beginning of the year for grade twos, but it comes. And I had kids without even being asked, I said this will go in fresh grade eventually. And I had kids find the activity and just put it in on their own today without even being asked. So they get it and they're seven and eight year olds. So uh, a couple of things, if you do decide to do it, troubleshooting, um, if you can't see your mark. So sometimes you'll get those outcomes in there, you're missing an outcome, uh, those kinds of things. Most common mistakes is the date. Uh, we've had sometimes that when you change that date, you'll have be a year ahead or a year behind or your range of dates doesn't match. Uh, mastery scale is not selected. This is again, for some reason, one of the biggest mistakes that we have found with different accounts when we tried to generate report cards our first year that we did it. Their activity may not be marked or the outcomes were not put in. So that's where the teacher went in and said, oh, I made the, it looks right because I went in and I put in the activity name and I did all that. But if they didn't make that absolute custom outcome to put in there, then we don't have a mark. So just a couple of things, and I know it's really quick, but I just wanted to show you like how great and easy it is. Um, honestly, for myself, I probably went from, I don't know how many hours of writing report cards come spring and we actually had two down to just where our admin said we were providing so much information throughout the year that we just are gonna print one at the end of the year. So even though there's been some workarounds, there's been that kind of stuff, like it really has saved us so much time. So yeah, I mean, there's lots to go with it. There's lots still that's happening, but um, we're very excited for the updates that are coming. And yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. That's great. So we do have some questions coming in. Um, one thing that I want to say before we take those questions is that also besides printing those report cards, as soon as you generate them for the kiddo, um, parents will actually see that right in their parent app. So as long as you've invited the parents in, a report card um, icon will pop up and they'll actually be able to tap on that icon and see all the previous report cards. Um, so that's there for them as well. And so that they can also review it right in the portfolio and the account and see even years to year how those report cards are progressing. So just a good a good note for you. Um, so if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to throw it in the chat panel there. Um, uh, let's see what the question is here. Um, so question is, I noticed that in the final report card, your science activities were not named after the outcome, creepy callers and such. Why that choice? Um, uh, that's how, uh, so can you explain why that would be happening and what your choice was there? 
I think that I think that your well, title well, is creepy crawlers, but the outcome is the is the objective. Is that correct? Oh yeah, um, that could have been as simple as um, there are a couple of activities that I might change the title to and add objectives to just out of um, like in social studies, we focus on communities. And so I just put those like, if, if I feel that I can give all of those outcomes a general mark, I will put them all together. So there might be a few that have changed. Yeah, yeah. that's a great question. Um, you know, it's just different preferences and little tweaks. Not one is right, not one is wrong. They're just different. Um, so, and how long has the process been for you, uh, Jared, in doing this? This isn't something that you guys did overnight. I know that you've been working on it and tweaking it. Can you talk a little bit to that? Um, yeah, so my first year in this district, um, I had, like, like, it was available, but we weren't really using it. So we just kind of, I just started playing with the portfolio side of it. And then my second year here, um, I started getting more into it. And I started having those conversations with admin saying, I'm like, there has to be an easier way. I started kind of just collecting my marks in it, then using it almost like a spreadsheet to give my actual report cards at the end of the year. Um, but then it was in that second year that there was lots of conversations, lots of like, you know, this is what I, I can show you. This is how far I can get. And then them saying, turn around and saying, okay, so we really want this aspect of the traditional report card. Is that possible? So that I'm going back and playing with how outcomes look and how the count looks and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so it's been that for my second year. And then it was, we started off the third year. So this is our second year making report cards. Wow. So you guys have come a long way. And another way to do this is also through the summary report feature. Um, it would just be more anecdotal. It's not going to pull in those objectives automatically for you. So you can create all the different um, areas, the subject areas, and just write in that, that feedback um, directly uh, is another way um, to do it. Uh, so question is, will be a calculate an average um, in fresh grade next year? I teach grade nine and we needed a mark at the end of the year. You're right. Yes, absolutely. We're going to have all all new um, grade book coming to you this next year, which is super exciting. So yes, stay tuned. We'll have more information on that. I've seen it. It's amazing. It works. It calculates. Um, so uh, yes, absolutely. There's going to be some amazing things that you'll be able to do in calculating averages. Um, what that looks like yet, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but this summer, you're going to start getting some peeks into that as we release the product. So stay tuned as we kind of work through what this looks like for next year. Um, but it's going to be even so much easier for you guys. 100%, um, including a standards-based uh, gradebook. So you can actually base your um, grading on the standards. So you'll be able to add standards. You'll be able to add multi-assessments, which is one of your guys' challenges that you have to an activity. So you can have multiple assessments per activity. So lots of things coming that's going to make this whole process so much simpler for you. All right, guys. So we're at the end of our time here. Thank you for all of your amazing questions. Thank you, Jared, so much for um, leading this webinar and sharing what you're doing in your classroom. Uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you online again. For anybody in the U.S. that is ending your school year already this week, um, have a wonderful summer break. And for all of our Canadian people, just a little bit longer. And then it's your turn to you. Um, and hopefully we'll see you online next time.